So good evening and welcome to this meeting of the Neighborhood and Community Development Standing Committee. Public comment is welcome during tonight's meeting. Anyone wishing to speak on any item on the Standing Committee agenda may do so when that item is up for discussion. Please get my attention if, if you wish to make a statement and you'll have five minutes to make your comments. We ask that you please come forward to the podium if you do wish to make comments and you'll be recognized there. And finally, we remind everyone for accurate recording and broadcast purposes to please speak as directly into a microphone as possible. Roll call, please. Roll call, Walter. Here. 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 Our first item of business is approval of our standing committee minutes from July 7th. Move for approval. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve those committee minutes as submitted. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say no. <clears throat> those minutes are approved as submitted. Takes us to our committee agenda. First item on the committee agenda is land bank applications. Mr. Slaughter. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Well, we just have some uh, applications and a best and final to go over tonight, short and sweet. Uh, if you'd like, I can give you those application addresses or they should be provided in your packet. Does anyone need the addresses reviewed? I do have two of those are for parking and the other, I believe nine are just yard extension. In looking at the act, now all of these have been approved by the Land Bank Advisory Board, correct? They have, com they have, they have, yes. Yes. All right, so if anyone has any comments or any questions on any of those applications, two for parking and the rest for yard extensions. Move for approval. Second. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve all of those ap Land Bank applications. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Roll call, Walters. Aye. Mejia. Aye. 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 Those are approved, and now for our best and final. Yes, thank you. Uh, the land bank <coughs> property address is 646 Oakland Avenue. We've received an application from 642 Oakland and 648 Oakland. Um, in our normal procedure of sending out a best and final letter to the applicants, they get an opportunity to express why they want the property expanded on that. Um, it was in, during this process that um, both parties basically came and shared the idea of, I only want the smaller part of it, the other guy's fine with that. So our recommendation is that um, we split the property with Mr. Shea getting 12 and a half feet closer to his property. I believe that would be the west side of the lot and then the east 37 and a half feet for Mr. Ollie. And you said both both came with that proposal? Yes, they both agreed to split it that way um, and it was kind of that way from the start. Very easy, pleasant process. Any questions or discussion about this application? Move for approval. Second. There's a motion and a second for the best and final at 646 Oakland Avenue. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Roll call, Walter. Aye. 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 That finishes the committee agenda. Thank you, Mr. Slaughter. And it brings us to our outcomes agenda. And when we initially set up uh, and reviewed the agenda for this meeting, we had listed and a discussion of outcomes for Neighborhood and Community Development Standing Committee. We as a committee are still gathering some data and doing some preparation work. So we are going to table that discussion until our next meeting, at which time we'll have a fuller and more productive discussion of outcomes for this committee. And that'll still be prior to our strategic planning meeting, which comes up on the 1st of November, Saturday, November 1st. So since that is tabled then, 
the, the business of this committee is completed for this evening and we are adjourned as the Neighborhood and Community Development Standing Committee. Unfortunately, tabling those items now opens up a space because the Economic Development and Finance Standing Committee is not scheduled to begin until 5.30, so we will wait until 5.30 to begin that meeting. So we will have a short recess in between meetings. <coughs>
there. Really good. <coughs> okay, <I'll> <laughs> All right, it is 5.30, so we will go ahead and get this meeting started. We'd like to welcome everyone to this meeting of the Economic Development and Finance Standing Committee. Public comment is welcome. Anyone who wishes to speak on any item on the Standing Committee agenda may do so when that item is up for discussion. If you do wish to speak, please come to the podium, be recognized by myself, and you'll have five minutes to make your comments. For accurate recording and broadcast purposes, we do ask that everyone speak as directly into a microphone as possible. Roll call, please. Here. 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 The first item on our agenda is approval of our minutes from our meeting of July 7th, 2014. Move for approval. Second. There's a motion and a second to accept the committee minutes as submitted. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Those minutes are approved as submitted. Now, commissioners, we had uh, a blue sheet that came out with some updated information on item number five, the digital outdoor advertising services, and added a new item number six, discussion and direction, proposed new South Patrol police station. What we are going to do, I've talked with everyone here on the committee, and we're going to change the order of the agenda. Rather than being item number six, we're going to move discussion and direction, proposed new South Patrol police station up to item number one, we're going to lead our meeting with that discussion and then take the rest of the agenda as originally set out. Mr. Tobin. Commissioners, uh, if I might, I'm here this evening uh, at the direction of the Public Works and Public Safety Standing Committee to present updated numbers for the construction of a new uh, South Patrol police facility uh, in conjunction with the new retail development anchored by the Walmart store right there roughly at 18th and Metropolitan at the old Kansas City Structural Steel site. Uh, if I can refer you to the memo of Robert Roddy that was attached to the blue sheet and to your uh, agenda package, uh, you can see that the size was kept the hey, same Mike, roughly. Mike, you need to talk into the microphone more. You can see that the size of the facility was kept the same at, at at 10,000 square feet and that the estimated total cost for the new facility would be $2.25 million, roughly $225 a foot. This number uh, includes all construction costs, uh, the extension of utilities to the facility, the interior and exterior finishes, the construction of the parking uh, required for this facility also. Um, it also includes the site work. Uh, the site is a little tricky to work on because it was an environmental site, but it, it will be fine. Uh, that number should be more than sufficient to construct that facility. Right below those numbers, uh, also at the direction uh, of the other standing committee, we put together the numbers for the move of the tactical unit, which is also housed with South Patrol right now, for them to move to a new facility. Uh, the size of that facility is, is smaller, uh, but since this would also be a new facility, uh, the number is basically about the same, about $225 a foot. And again, that would include all construction costs, interior, exterior, finished site work, extension of utilities, et cetera. However, uh, it, it's my understanding that the, the tactical unit is, is not really an appropriate attachment, let us say, for for the South Patrol Police Station. But that's the opinion, I believe, of the police department. I'm sorry, I, didn't, I don't understand that. I'll, I'll clarify. And it's not the South Patrol, it's not the attachment to South Patrol, it's an evaluation of it. We'd rather not have our tactical unit located within a shopping center location for when they need to mobilize or such like that. So that's we're not coming with the recommendation that we would put it in that location. Um, the other standing committee was very avid about us wanting to not leave it behind in the older facilities if we made the move to improve the South Patrol and move them out and not put it into that facility. So what I had uh, Mike do was just price it more of the building perspective. 
land cost or where we might go for land is not factored into this number we haven't we haven't worked on alternative sites at that point and if you want additional explanation on that chief Hansen's here she could speak to it otherwise that's well so just to be clear that the if if the it, it does move to that new site if we're to move the south patrol to a new site the tactical unit the, the police department is asking that it not remain behind there on on south 34th which means we would have to build or find a new place to house the tactical unit you you we would have one of three options okay i mean one is we just move south patrol out and the tactical unit remain in the building they're in uh, most likely what we would do is move it over into the other station that south patrol occupies now so we'd probably expand their space or work with it like that um, two is make the decision to move the tactical unit out at the same time and then find a new location for them i guess the third is that it could go where well and i will say this we're not recommending that it go over to the shopping center so that's okay. they, they don't have to go together um, but the other committee wanted to make sure we were evaluating that option and I, and I guess also I want to make sure the committee understands. Mike jumped into where we are, where this committee's at from a financial perspective. When this item was brought before the other committee, we talked about um, what had happened in the process. And Mike, maybe you want to speak to that a little bit, because we were moving down a path to co-locate a public facility um, in the South Patrol location, thinking we were going to get a influx of money uh, maybe from a joint facility with the state of kansas for a corrections unit um, that did not materialize mike maybe you want to it, it was that. originally thought that the department of corrections was going to share uh, as a tenant in the facility which would have helped help offset all of the costs in the tiff district the uh, department of corrections informed us however that they could not do that did not have the financing to do that and it was at our, our report at the last committee meeting where we told them that this had occurred and we need to reevaluate our numbers to move forward. And that included our construction numbers since they would not now be part of it and it would be all police and the numbers for the financing. So I'm just, again, trying to clarify this. So right now we're looking at uh, 2.25 million for just for the South Patrol to be built in the new shopping center, but that additional expenses then to somehow uh, reestablish the, the 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 tactical unit in a different place or in the same location that it's currently in. Yes, correct. And it, <clears throat> and it are, like I said, you have multiple decisions here you could look at from that standpoint. Right. And let me make you know since I wasn't present for the other committee's discussion let me just make sure that I'm understanding here so now tonight we're looking at some financing option or some we're looking at some finance numbers and is it my understanding that the concept for how to build these stations hasn't changed over time but there has been some change in the potential financing so the cost estimates are staying as originally projected I will say no because we had started with early work of this project then we moved into the joint facility and then we went back to the the single south patrol station and that's what we were working with so we we had not what we, what we were planning was to come to this committee about this same time and be saying here's a proposal based on our numbers with the state of how we think this project could be financed and and if you recall in our budget what we did was we built in money for this project but it was built in as special revenue so we have not built any money into the uh, into our general fund budget to pay for <coughs> any of these costs so now with that change what we did was we went back and uh, Lou Levin and his team went through and ran the numbers. So if you look at the sheet that's labeled the South Patrol, if you have that, I'll just kind of walk through that a little bit. And if Lou, you see something you want to jump on. What he did was he ran this over a 20-year time period, assuming the TIF 
period that we're looking at. So that's, that's what helps make this project work. So we've got a couple things that come into play. One, we have a, a Department of Commerce one-time contribution. It's noted down at the bottom of the page, $400,000. They were willing to do something to help stimulate kind of the joint project as well as help this whole shopping area move forward, creating jobs, creating activity that was going on there. When corrections pulled out, Commerce said, hey, we understand, and, and, and to the point of corrections, they, they did this very nice to us in the way they did it. They came in, told us it just didn't work. But Commerce said, hey, we're still willing to contribute our $400,000 to your project if it'll help it go forward now. So I said, thank you. We'll work with that in our numbers. So they factored that into the cost to say the $2.25 million. Um, we use that $400,000 as upfront money. And then what Lou has done is shown a payment for principal and interest running down here. So in the far right column, you see what our deficit is. We're short 102,000 up to 104, $5,000 up through year 2022. So if we were to move forward with this plan, we would have to put a little over $100,000 in the budget starting in 2016 in order to pay for the debt service on this project. However, the, the really positive number that comes by this whole scenario is in by 2023, based on our current revenue flows that we're projecting for that TIF area, and we can use the TIF revenues to pay for public buildings, we actually go into a positive margin of a little over almost $8,000. And then you see that number continue to move through. You know, it's eight to $20,000 a year until um, we get to 2034. And then in those two last years, it looks like we have a deficit again of about $70,000. So, Lou, the combined debt that we would have in building a $2.25 million facility would be the $701,000 that we would have to fund out of the general fund, correct? As projected. As projected. And, and as Lou qualifies by his projection number is, this is projecting based on our estimated TIF revenue flows that are coming from the site. So as we look at any project we have, obviously we're going to be standing behind these bonds. We don't have somebody else that's going to say, we believe the revenue would flow. You know, if we're short any amount of that number, that coverage number of the $8,000 a year is, is what you have. So it's not a lot of coverage over and above. Really, I would say, you know, you're looking at more of a one-to-one -one coverage ratio when you're looking at we think this will be because this is the money that will come at the end of um, the waterfall when you look at the flow of revenue so you have a risk factor to say well if it doesn't come in we could be paying hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year that we would have to put into it from the general fund in order to make this happen um, you know so when I look at this and say if we can leverage seven hundred thousand dollars over the next 20 years you know 150 of it which comes 19 and 20 years from now that's a good deal for us um, and it, and it kind of then that's why we've moved it forward because it's kind of like when we look at projects that we're working on with KDOT and we're out there on a road well we may say well it's a four million dollar road we don't really have it but if we have KDOT come in and say oh, we'll fund it for two or a federal government grant that's a little about how you can look at a project like this and that's why it's before you today to say do you want to consider you know this to move forward at this time um, we're not under any immediate time constraint or anything like that this is in our control as to how we'd work it so that that's how the south patrol option works according to this and Lou did I miss anything in the way I explained that or do you want to cover anything yeah I, maybe maybe I'll just discuss uh, how the excess TIF revenue uh, could be generated in the future the, um, the these numbers I would say that they're certainly preliminary figures we have a we've provided backing government backing to, um, to two project areas within the metropolitan if TIF 
the the first being the uh, where the save a lot development is with Dollar General, and and that project's currently performing based on its assessed valuation and uh, the incremental TIF revenues we're receiving to date. The excess TIF revenues are would occur from the Walmart project. Uh, so we don't really have a revenue stream that we can say these are the revenues today. We used revenue projections based on uh, what, what the typical uh, neighborhood Walmart store would produce and an estimate of property tax revenue. So, the, so based on our, those particular assumptions, if that project performs to that level by year 10, it will be generating excess TIF revenue. It will pay off the uh, obligations associated with that TIF. Right now, those obligations, what, what the government has committed to the Walmart project is um, 2.7 million for the Walmart project and an additional million dollars for street improvements that the government's uh, proceeding with. And we, we haven't issued permanent financing. Our expectation is we, we have a temporary note in place and we would go to permanent financing uh, next March on that project. But that project will begin to generate revenue immediately uh, w as it is opening on time this week and uh, its current property value for, for that Walmart is, was based upon where it was as of January this year, 2014, where it was vacant property. So it's really first property valuation will occur in January 2015 and at that time we'll, we'll be able to um, I'll, I'll say have more accurate or up-to-date information on what that TIFs going to generate. So I just have some general comments to make, um, but first I have some questions. So originally, when this was this project was discussed, like you said, it was both tactical and the public safety building, but the co estimated cost was like six million dollars. Um, and I know this because how this all started, for those of you around the table that don't have a history on that, um, I was acutely aware of the needs of public safety for several years now. But about a year ago, I went to um, an architectural firm called Hafer Waisaki, who offered to donate about $100,000 worth of their time and architectural efforts to work with our police administration and um, South Blachero police officers and come up with plans for the ideal building for South Patrol. That was all donated. Um, it didn't cost us anything except our officers, some of our command staff officers and South Patrol officers time. Um, and they came up with a plan and this plan involved approximately, like I said, a $6 million building. So I'm, I'm just concerned, I'm, I'm not at all negative at this point. <laughs> I'm just concerned how do we go from a $6 million facility to a $2 million facility? And how do we go from excluding the tactical unit when administration drove the planning effort around the police, this police public safety facility? And at that time, they said it was a good idea. Um, and that was part of the discussion. So I'm just curious how we got there. This is what I don't want to do. I don't want to do something halfway. I mean, if we're going to build a facility, we need to build a nice facility instead of just kind of piecemealing things together. This Walmart neighborhood market is the second in our entire county. It's the first market and it's the second Walmart in our whole county. It's going to be open 24 hours a day. It sits right off 18th Street Expressway. We need public safety there. Um, so I want it to be a quality facility that is obviously well staffed and has the resources that police need to do their job well. So again, if $2 million does that and the officers can tell me, um, not just command staff, no offense, Chief Hansen, um, but that the guys actually doing the work on the street can tell me, that's okay. 
that's a good facility and we're good with that, then I'm okay with that. Uh, Mike, do you want to speak to, and, and one of the difficult things for us is, I don't know that we ever had a full breakdown of the work you had with the Hopper Wasaki as far as what they built into it. We know there were elements here that may, you know, you may want to add back to it as far as, you know, one thing we went by is what we did out at Midtown and the station there, which is about 6,000 square feet. This is structured off a 10,000 square foot facility because we added room for community policing. Um, and, and Mike, maybe you can speak to it. I know we had a communications <coughs> systems room bunker within it, which was a very expensive facility. It's not in this. There was a large community room component. So yeah, maybe there's some value engineering, but there's some change in the scope that we put in this and we're more directed toward taking the Midtown Patrol Station and then growing it for some of the other input based on what we received from PD. Mike, you want to answer that? Well, and, and, and if I might start with, uh, the, the 2.25 million is just South Patrol. If the TAC unit did go there or wherever it ends up, that's another $750,000. So your, your facility is actually at $3 million. And uh, I, I, as Doug said, I did not uh, have a lot of documents from Wysocki to see what, what they came up with. But I can assure you that at $225 a foot, this will be a nice facility. And, and it'll be, it'll be uh, that's a more expensive per foot cost than the Midtown structure. And it's also uh, a, a more expensive cost than, than the office part of the Fleet Center. Okay. And, and more, in, more, I'm sorry, Commissioner, but more in line at $225 a foot with with uh, it's a, even a little bit more than modern fire station construction at this point. Okay, so I guess the so I have to trust you on that because I don't have any plans in in front of me and I don't know what's been you know reduced or taken out. But your math makes sense to me, so I would agree with you there. Um, I guess what I want to know is um, I'd like to maybe hear from police. It, which is it tactical? is best staying or tactical is best going because that is a mixed message because when we were doing these I was over there I know some of the other commissioners here were at the planning session at um, headquarters and they were very specific to say that the tactical unit should move also so I just need for someone to tell me because what I don't want to do is leave this meeting and then hear from yeah. people well, in the tactical unit that say what happened to us two different answers I'm asked Chief Hansen to come forward please um, one is the movement of the tactical unit to be located in the shopping center and if you would speak to our thoughts on that part of the process and the second is speaking to whether or not I think tactical is left in the current facility is a different question so first I'd like you to address you know the discussion we had about moving it into the shopping center location right well something about our tactical unit or our score unit uh, that a lot of people don't understand is one of the important elements for them uh, is to show up at whatever location that they need to respond to and have an unanticipated arrival as best as they can. And so moving into a strip mall type of an environment kind of eliminates that possibility. You've got so much foot traffic, even like you said, 24 hours a day. And to be able to take this because it would be real cool to get that on Facebook and say, oh, look, you know, we don't know where they're going, but, you know, here's, they're leaving now. <laughs> and then that goes on Facebook, and then the element of surprise is compromised. Or the fact where we are now, they leave, and, you know, they're almost to where they need to go before anybody, they attract a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. But uh, so we haven't had a problem with people seeing this mm -hmm. and deciding they're going to follow along and kind of caravan and see what's going on. But in other places where they have had to establish a headquarters where there's a lot of traffic and activity, that has happened. So really, ideally, uh, and I don't know about the beginning of the project, I don't know that it was ever offered as an option that, s that the score could be in a separate location. But a location that is more isolated, that gives them the opportunity uh, to drill, to you know, practice, to have their equipment moving around without attracting attention 
is really what's best for that type of an operation. Uh, to stay where they are, that is, you know, a possibility. It's not ideal, but, um, you know, I think it probably is in many ways preferable to going someplace where they're going to be high visibility. We would obviously like for them to have a place where they can practice, drill, have a pleasant work environment. You've been in there. Yeah. Um, you know, so that, yes, we would very much like to see that happen. If they have to stay there or stay there for a while, then that's an option that, you know, certainly is a possibility. And, and this is why I built the option that brings it back that, as I said, is there's not a recommendation from us. And, and maybe the difference between when the architects were talking to them is a different question than when I was talking to them. Because it's my job to drill down on, does this work for you and how well does it work for you versus how would you build the facility on the site? Mm -hmm. And so it's probably the tone or the manner in which the question was asked and they went along with it as the architects work with it. But when I start dealing as to how well it will work for us from an operational perspective, that's where it became very clear that was not an operational move we thought would be a good one. And if we're gonna spend the money to do it, you know, we really, I mean, from a TIF perspective, we use up all the TIF doing the South Patrol piece of this anyway. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, it, you're really, whether you put South Patrol in that area or you put them somewhere else, you're spending all that money. So I broke it out, had this separate. So if you say, you know what, we're just going to make the move, we're going to get out of that location, and I don't have a number in here factored for the sale of that property. So if we completely left that property, I believe we would be able to sell it. Um, we'd get some money back. It's not a million dollars coming back. It's probably more like a hundred. I don't honestly know what the number is. So it's, but it's somewhere in there. You know, it, it'd be a number we could get some money back for that property. It's not going to cover the 743,000, but we would find at that point, we would look for what is the best location for tactical to go and try to fit them in somewhere. And, and here's our building cost. It may be some property we already have access to that we could get relatively cheap, but they're not a they're not a community policing unit anyway. They don't go somewhere to interact with the neighbors and, and hang out with people <laughs> and people aren't gonna go there and do reports. So it's not the same kind of a component as coming in with a, a community policing station or a patrol station like that. So um, it would be a logistically located based on our other needs and how that could work for us in the community. So that's why this cost is here for you to evaluate. Like I say, you can say, we like the way the South Patrol looks. We pursue that option. Here's the cost. We need to figure out how we're gonna identify that to pay for it. And then tactical, you know, that's just a net cost. As you see, Lou built this in to really kind of mirror the other development, as you see, puts it at about 41, 42,000, and then ramps it up when the other one gets taken over by the TIF. So it allows it to be a little lower cost and then go up to a higher cost as the other part of the project is taken out by the TIF piece. So I'd just like some reassurance. I, I don't think this is how police works, but I would like some reassurance that the tactical unit is okay with staying where they're at. I mean, and the reason I care about that is I, I did a, I did a tour of the South Patrol and the tactical unit building, which is the barn in the back. And Charlie Chief, no one was complaining, but I asked him to sort of walk me through what happens, you know, when they come into work and they get ready to go do something. And there were some things I was a little personally concerned by. I will tell you, none of them seemed very concerned, frankly, so they were okay. But things like um, that they have drug dogs and that there isn't any place for those drug dogs to be out and that oftentimes they'll wait in a in one of the cars for an extended period of time and that also um, there is no uh, shower in that facility and these officers use things like uh, tear gas and um, whatever else if you get on you it hurts <laughs> um, yeah. and so they need to get it off of themselves and there's no way to do that right now um, I know that they have a lot of electronic equipment and it looks like they have maybe like one or two outlets and so they have all these little extra strips that they have to plug into and that that's a difficulty. The temperature control is very difficult in the building and they have explosive equipment 
and um, I guess uh, anti-terrorist sort of equipment that could explode if temperatures are too hot or too cold, I guess. Um, so they need some temperature control going on there, which they do a little bit, but I think it's an air conditioning window unit and they have to leave the door open to the garage, I believe. That's just my observation, really. And some of those observations might be wrong, but that's what I saw go on when I was there. So I could see how um, there could be some adjustments made to South Patrol to, you know, especially like Administrator Box said, if you move the guys' offices, and I say guys only because there are no women there. Right. Yeah, because I was, because I will tell you, the other thing I was concerned about is that um, for people who haven't been there, uh, the room is no bigger than from myself to you that they get ready for roll call or they get together to leave in. And when they change sometimes into the appropriate gear, they do that in the same spot they meet in. So it would be like if all of a sudden we all stood up from these desks and we changed our clothes. So if there's a girl in that crowd and there's a bunch of guys, that would be a little awkward, I would think. So um, I just think there has to be more reasonable accommodations than that, just my personal opinion. And I don't think those are too high expectations to have for our police officers. So I'll back up and just tell you, if the actual officers, men or women, that are in this unit, if it addresses some of those issues and if they're okay with that, then I would be fine with that. But I wanna be sure that they're okay and they don't have any concerns. Sure. Yeah, nobody wants to take better care of all of the officers, including the SCORE team, than I do. And I will tell you, of the options that you have in front of you, what I think what we are, the point that we're trying to make is, yes, eventually you're gonna to need to invest in a new headquarters for the SCORE team. If you're going to invest in the new headquarters, we strongly recommend it not be in a strip mall because you're gonna spend that money there. We recommend, rather than spend it there, spend it somewhere that is more isolated and suits their purposes better. If, if we had to make a choice right now between going to a strip mall and working within the confines of what South Patrol will leave behind, mm -hmm. then that probably would be the preferable because it's less expensive and still leaves the option that perhaps in the future SCORE could have what they really need. Okay. But your assessment of where they are right now is 100% accurate. Good. And actually, <laughs> when I visited uh, South Patrol, the women's restroom was non-functional that day. So there's, you know, it, they're old buildings and they need something uh, to make them anywhere near what the other headquarters and buildings have. Mm -hmm. And by no means are we asking to take a good building and, and build a luxury building. I mean, that's why I gave those specific examples. Right. And, you know, when you talk about police dogs, you don't want those police dogs anywhere around a strip mall. Right. So, you know, there's just a lot of elements there that, that cry for a setting that is not in the middle of a lot of other human activity. Well, and... and my gut tells me I don't want to leave them behind. <laughs> uh, I don't want to leave the tactical unit behind. I want to make sure, you know, they've been very cooperative through this whole thing, and they also have, um, would like to see, I think, some improvements. And so I just want to make sure that if we do move, like you said, Doug, if we do do the South Patrol facility with just the South Patrol officers, that we, we look at better accommodations in the meantime for the tactical unit. Well, I, I think it's safe to say um, I've had the opportunity to see many of our fire stations and, and all of our uh, division stations for the police, and it's safe to say that we have things that we need to address in almost every facility that we operate. We certainly have issues of uh, accommodations for women in almost every one of those fire and police stations that we still need to address. We have issues of old infrastructure. And so what we really, I think, need to think about here is in the context of an overall strategic plan for how we upgrade all of our infrastructure for police and fire alike. So even if we stay behind, if, if 
SCORE were to stay at their current location now, it still has to be part of the bigger discussion about how are we going to make everything better across our whole operation. In terms of South Patrol uh, Station itself, so Mike, you said that this ex ends up coming in at a um, lesser per square foot cost than our current Midtown? Yes, not, not drastically, but somewhat lesser. But, but comparable. Now, Midtown, we had, a, did the Tiger Grant build all of that, or did we contribute to that? No, uh, we contributed to uh, the interior finish and, and the cost of design. So, maybe he needs to clarify. Okay. I, I think when he's saying less, you're saying what the real costs were in it, not yeah. what we contributed. So, he's saying it's less than what the actual construction costs were to build the facility. Right. Right. You're I'm not addressing the, the grant parts or, or, what or we, who. But you're who, where I'm what. going next. Yeah. So what was our contribution to match the Tiger at Midtown? Oh, I don't, I don't have that in front of me, Commissioner. I don't remember what that exact number was. I'm thinking it was around 600000 Correct. So this is just the thing that kind of runs through my mind here. As we think about strategically investing in all of our public safety and government facilities, if we spent 600000 uh, up against the Tiger match, we have TIF money and, oops, I'm on the wrong side. We have TIF money and the Department of Commerce money, which certainly is less than the Tiger grant was. So our, our uh, match will be a little bit bigger. But it still seems to me we're taking the same step of leveraging money and picking off one more piece where we're not paying the full price. And so to me, although we're going to be challenged, to find a place to fund this in CMIP for the first seven years up until the TIF revenues are sufficient. To me, it's just part of that big discussion we have to have about how are we going to make things right across the whole operation. And my first blush get uh, look at this is the leverage isn't as big as Midtown was, but it's still leveraged. It's better than us paying the whole bill. As, as the administrator stated earlier, Commissioner, I mean, you're, you're basically getting your, your police structure for $700,000. Yeah. And it's a, it's a two and a quarter plus million dollar right. facility. So we're getting a one to two match. So, um, Commissioner, I would just also add one other small thing, but I think it's important for you to know. So um, I just informed our administrator this week that um, the not-for-profit I work for will be doing $25,000 worth of site prep to the site um, in advance if the facility is placed there, which would be $25,000 worth of work that the unified government would need to do, which is control of the environmentally contaminated fill site. Um, we're putting new fence around it and we're clearing and grubbing that area. Um, and we're doing that simply to help because we recognize the costs are really high. Um, it's not a ton of money, but we've already given the police department $10,000 cash, and Walmart will be giving them $3,600 uh, $3, on Wednesday, um, awarding them money. And I've already uh, met on multiple occasions with Administrator Bach that when we had a number, a concrete number, and we had an idea of what the facility, the quality of the facility was going to be, once you have that, I personally am more than willing to raise money to close that gap, to ask people to contribute. I have a couple of funders that are interested. My concern is, is that, um, not that it wouldn't be, but if the facility wasn't nice, a funder wouldn't necessarily want their name on it. So I'm, I'm trying to, I don't know how to say it without just saying it that way. <laughs> So it would have to be a quality facility for someone to donate and put their name on it. So I agree it's a balancing act, and I'm appreciative for what they're bringing forward, and based on what Mike Tobin has told us about, that the cost is pretty comparable to what was proposed initially. I feel you know, much better about that. And I'll, I'll be glad to continue to do that. I've got just a couple more questions. Um, when we look at you know, let's see. Yeah, we've looked here at the South Patrol, seven hundred thousand dollars, but it says total UG cost, estimated cost one point oh eight, and so it looks like we've got just operations charges that are factored in there over time. Or what's the common area maintenance charges estimate? 
that's basically a, a, a per square foot charge for the maintenance and upkeep of the facility. You know, and historically, Commissioner, we are uh, not very good at taking care of facilities once we get them built. And so we're going to go ahead and, and include that cost in, in part of the project. Uh, okay, so we're actually dedicating up front to avoid deferring maintenance over the long haul. Correct. Okay. Well, that answers my question because I, I wondered if there were a similar charge on the current uh, facility that could be backed out against this, but I would guess the answer is no. Okay. Um, and then one more. And now I don't. Oh, I know what it was. Now, if we look at the, the tactical unit. Um, if we were to go the route of South Patrol moves, tactical stays where they are right now until we can get a better plan for where to move them, the total project cost there would be reduced somewhat or could be reduced somewhat by the sale of that existing building at that time. Would that be right? Yes. So that would take down our total estimate of investment by some factor, maybe a tenth of the project or less than that. And also, Commissioner, if I might, if the tactical unit were not part of, of a strip mall, as the chief addressed, uh, the aesthetics of the building uh, on the exterior and in the, in the exterior elevations might not have to be as expensive. And that might also bring down that cost somewhat. And, and uh, where there hasn't even been a discussion of, of a location other than strip mall or current, you know, we are the largest property owner in the county. Mm -hmm. And so there, we have, <laughs> we have, we have a lot of property where it could be located. Okay, so, so ultimately that figure could come down to something that might end up being manageable even in the fairly short run. Yes. Okay. So what do you need from us? Well, well I guess in the end, I mean, what we're looking for is the direction. And I guess to some of you, you would probably remember the radio project that we funded this summer um, that I came back for that this is kind of how that kind of thing happens. We moved forward with the project a couple of years ago. We received direction from the commission, but in this case, I wouldn't be seeking the funding to put in the budget until down the road after we already commit ourselves and we issue bonds and we're there and we have to build it in. So in the case of that project, we brought it forward and just you know I found a way to to you know we had to add it to our budget to work with it and do a little manipulations but that that's the kind of thing we're looking at it's kind of the eyes wide open by all the governing body that I'm not identifying hundred and fifty thousand dollars to take out of the police department's budget right now or take out of somebody else's budget and it's not a overwhelming amount of money but the bottom line is when we're coming down to a $300 million budget in our fund balance is almost n not non-existent. It's an issue when we go through and build our budget next year. You know, it's the reason we go through and we put half a roof on the courthouse when we needed to fix the leaky area. You know, instead of fixing the whole thing, we're not getting the money to do it all in one shot. So I'm, I'm asking you to look at it from that perspective. This is money we'll need. And we got we to gotta find our ways to, to manage through that so that essentially, Commission, we're looking for direction. If you're saying this is something we're willing to invest in, we recognize that we don't have funding identified it for it now, but we'll go into next year's budget process knowing that, you know, essentially you're directing me to get the money and put it in um, and, and find out where we're going. That's a pro process we'd follow. Lou would be moving in advance of that based on our timing of how we would advance this project to really get a bond issue structured. So we would already go out and issue a bond at some point in the near future so we have the money to start working with because he's got to cut the whole thing, you know, as we, for our cash basis law to move forward. Now we may have a little bit of latitude with the money from the state that allows us to advance some things, but they're not going to release it until they've got the full commitment from us to move forward. And I think Mike was looking at doing a design bid for this, weren't you, Mike? Or were you going to try to go ahead and do full designs and then come back and do a 
no. project are still evaluating? No, it was the staff opinion, Doug, that we would proceed with a notice of need given the direction of the, of the commission and, and go design build. Because we so think that's, that would be uh, the quickest, most efficient, and cost effective way to do it. That's and what I, we found. And I think at. during that process, when we come through, we would show them what, what our expectations are in terms of design and such like that. And as they go through their preliminary numbers, if they're looking at something to say, well, you're way off, we'll come back and say, well, no, we're wrong. 225 is not going to get it, you know. But we don't have to issue our bonds until we, you know, we kind of have some of those early conversations with them. So, okay. Commissioner Townsend. Thank you. Um, I just want to back up because I feel like I've come in in the middle of the conversation. So I just want to make sure I understand what it is that we're being asked to do tonight. And I'll break these questions up um, as the discussion's been going previously, South Patrol versus the tactical unit issue. Um, with regard to the South Patrol, has it already been decided that there is going to be a new uh, a new South Patrol facility and our only issue is how do we pay for it? No, there's no final decision that's been made. Okay. <clears throat> that's still there. Now I'll say this went before the Public Safety Committee because we were talking about the facility. Mm -hmm. That committee voted on it and said we want you to move forward and get a new facility done and directed us to come before this committee and figure out how to pay for it because that's economic development finance. So they were very emphatic in support to say, we'd like to figure out how to do this. But knowing they haven't seen the numbers either. So I mean, in fairness, you know, it would be, it, that's where it comes back to this committee where we go through, we evaluate the, the numbers, what we'd be looking at as far as a future commitment. And then I would say this would probably be a good package for us to take forward to the full governing body and if they have any questions on it or then we could bid move forward it, this is this is unorthodox I mean it's not the typical way we've done these kind of things we we build them in you know we go through the budget process we identify that's where it's going to be in the future and and we build our budget and we go from there mm -hmm. this is an opportunity that comes off cycle which happens so and we we don't have a precedent of doing it in our facilities so it's a good opportunity to look at from that perspective. So if we get that direction from you all, then I would say we would take it so the whole governing body can vote on it to say we agree this is a estimate that we think looks reasonable to us from a bond schedule in the future. And then we would proceed down the path to get a notice of need out to get someone in to do a design build option. I would say so that's and that's just for the South Patrol. And then really the same question then on the tactical unit okay well let me stick with the south patrol um you were saying we have an opportunity here to do this is this a good opportunity uh because we were i mean there's a need here i'm trying to get to the bottom line of this and does this look different now well scratch that what what would the numbers look like? What is the impact of the state not making their contribution? For instance, through 20, from 2016 up through 2022, you're talking about $104,000 just for the South Patrol, and us trying to cover that deficit. What would that have looked like had the state come in, had, had the state um, no, gone it, forward? I, I think I know. Um, so I'll try. Um, so I think where there's confusion at Commissioner Townsend is that um, the state not coming through just means we're not building the portion of the building that would be housing state employees, the parole offices. They decided not to enact that lease. Actually, the state came through with flying colors, in my opinion. Um, we just received $400,000 from the state cash to help us build a new South Patrol facility. And what Administrator Bach is saying is that if we don't build this public safety facility, this South Patrol, then they want their money back. This is free money we don't ever have to pay back. So there really wasn't a loss. There was, whether we built uh, the building with parole 
or with um, out parole, there was always a gap. It was always how to fill that gap. Well, okay, this is Commerce, Department of Commerce. Is this Kansas Department of Commerce or this U.S. Department yes. of Commerce? Candidly, Commissioner Townsend, I went to the governor and I said, we need your help. We have a gap on this property. And he went to Commerce and they worked together to help figure out how to get us $400,000 to help offset the cost of a new safety building, only because in almost every one of our surveys in Wyandotte County, all of our constituents have said public safety is their number one concern. That's what happened. Okay, so we've got the 400,000, but because the state will not have this tenant in there, would we have gotten more than 400,000? I guess that's what I'm trying to understand, no. So we've gotten as much as no. we ever would have got. I would say that what we had found when the state was part of the facility, mm -hmm. we were gonna be able to build a larger facility. So some of the site work costs, which were gonna be generally the same, helps bring down your cost per square foot. Okay. So our, so yeah, the answer to that is, yeah, there was some synergy that was being created by the combination of the two facilities that was going to lower our cost. So we weren't, you wouldn't have had the same commitment of numbers coming into this when we went through and ran what they were gonna to contribute to the site. So like I say, site work costs were brought down because of the joint facilities. And then also going into the same facilities, we had some, you know, there's a, some of the mechanical systems you can start to share and stuff like that. So you just bring down your overall cost per square foot. And it was, so it was gonna be a, a little better deal for us based on the rents we were gonna receive. but. Well, well, it just sounds like, correct me if I'm wrong, then we're, we would still have had this 104,000 deficit on average, on average for those, was seven years. Okay. Yeah, maybe a little less than that, but Okay. Yeah. Well, 100,000. Yeah. Um, what happens if this is not built? Since, we, since what I'm understanding is that we have not addressed that fundamental question yeah so what happens if it's not built we can see we don't have the money initially long term it may be a good deal what happens if it's not built well we will continue operating in the facilities we're operating out of today okay and we give the four hundred thousand dollars back yeah and i think th i think that's the key is that we would not only give the 400 back but we would also um i think we just miss an opportunity to take one dollar and turn it into three. Because effectively, when you look at the, our contribution to the project and the total cost of the project, one of our dollars ultimately turns into three over time with the combination of the state's contribution and the TIF revenue uh, from the project. So I think it, it could represent a lost opportunity. Okay. But recognizing that it does have an impact on CMIP in 16 through 22, my suggestion would be, uh, unless we're under a tremendous time crunch, what if we took this to our November 1st strategic planning? We have the entire commission there. We can have a discussion about how this fits into another step in strategically starting to address deficiencies in our infrastructure and we can also kind of think about how it impacts the overall CMIP, then bring the, the request for action back to the entire commission then to act on moving forward, depending. So I have something to say. I, I have a greater sense of urgency than that, Commissioner McKiernan. I appreciate what you're saying, and from process perspective, it sounds great, but this is the deal. I'll say again, we have the first ever Walmart neighborhood market in Kansas City, Kansas and Wyandotte County, and we have the first ever, I believe, I believe Doug and I have talked about the statistic, Walmart east of 635. Mm -hmm. We have a chance for this business to be very successful east of 635 and open up potential for additional Walmarts throughout our county. We have to be successful. This facility is gonna be open 24 hours a day, right off a major highway. Mm -hmm. You don't have to know a lot about crime to know that that is ripe for picking. So I want to make sure it is the safest possible Walmart neighborhood market around. And how best way to do that is get public safety right up underneath them and make sure that they're always there. Those have multiple shifts going 24 hours a day, 
seven days a week on the holidays. I want to know that that market is taken care of. So for me, it's really much beyond just a new, a new South Patrol. It's about economic development. That's what it is for me. It's about proving that we can build quality businesses east of 635 and have them perform well. And the best way to do that is to protect those investments. But it doesn't well, occur. It doesn't occur in, in isolation, though. It it has a, an impact on CMIP, that that then cascades down. As we talked about this year, any change in CMIP cascades down and moves other projects around, and you quite an emphasis there on ensuring the safety of this development. And I appreciate that, but it makes me wonder. What are we going to require? What are we going to ask for? What are we going to expect in terms of public safety investment in other economic development activities? Commissioner, I w and I'd like to address this to the chief, if I may. It, I, I want to make me clear, and, and this is probably, I'm sure this discussion has already been, you've had this several times. You're not suggesting that if we locate the, the South Patrol at ne adjacent to the Walmart, that somehow there'll be a reordering of resources to ensure that that Walmart receives absolute security, or at least to a range of absolute security, which would then compromise the coverage in the rest of the South Patrol. You're not suggesting that in any way. No, I think it's exactly what uh, the commissioner uh, described is the natural comings and goings of those marked cars and 24-7 uh, in that area just by that nature is what we're, we're not thinking about any other extra effort. My, my concern would be if there were to be some incident, you know, some crime, which there certainly will be no matter what, that then the expectation would not be, well, we're not devoting enough resources to this strip mall, this new mall here. No. That's not the expectation. Uh, no, we have very limited resources in total and right. so we are very limited in how we can move and deploy and and you know we have uh, a certain amount of coverage and protection that we have to provide across the city we can't just all of a sudden rob peter to pay paul that won't happen thank you i just wanted to make sure that was clear mm -hmm. so well, right, oh sorry go ahead. well going back to um the need right now and like i said i'm starting from scratch with this um how much closer or not would the building of this new facility be to the Walmart than what it is currently? I mean, do we, are we saying that without this new facility, we do not believe our citizens who patronize that area would be safe? No, I think what, what I am saying is typically it's been my experience um, as a former probation officer, people do not like to commit crime when there are law enforcement officers around. So it's not any more resources, it's just their presence. And it's not that they wouldn't be safe, it's just that I think the likelihood of criminal acts occurring with a police station right there next to the Walmart mm -hmm. is less likely than if there was not a police station next to the Walmart. Okay, well, th this is it. Where is the closest police presence there now? How, far, how close is that? It's um, the current South Patrol, which is probably a couple miles away. It's about a mile. Okay. Right. Well, I guess I understand the desire to have all of our citizens safe and to protect the new development. But I guess I am thinking along the lines of Commissioner McKiernan, not saying no, but, but this is how the things happen. And I think uh, the administrator made reference to the radio project. Um, my recollection was that that was mandated. I thought that we didn't have really any option or the previous boards didn't have any option. It was something we had to do. I'm wondering how much leeway we have to accomplish this in a way that we're not setting up commissions down the road to deal with something similar, you know, 
and, and have them wondering what were we thinking about at the time. I didn't hear when I asked the question in initially what would happen if we don't do this, if, if our citizens are still going to be safe. I think that's the number one motivation, as, as Commissioner um, Merguia mentioned. So maybe it's a matter of timing or looking at this overall, as uh, Commissioner McKiernan suggested, with other, you know, the other impact of it, the other impact strategically speaking. You know, just let me say one thing. When you talk about need, I would just suggest if you haven't been to South Patrol, please go by there because I think that was one of the initiating factors here is if South Patrol would have been in a uh, building without asbestos, in a building that was in good repair, in a building that really served the needs uh, and provided an adequate workspace, this proposal would have never moved forward. There is a real need there. Okay. And if you haven't been there, I invite you to go take a tour. It'll take about two minutes because it's very small. <laughs> but um, it is, it's a house and a barn. And uh, it's tiny little workspace. And every time I talk to somebody from South Patrol, I am amazed they have great morale. They're enthused about their job in spite of that. But I will tell you, when I walked in there the first time, mm -hmm. I was appalled. So, you know, when you, the need isn't just for the safety level for the community. The need is also providing a safe and adequate workspace for the people that work out of that station. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. I, I guess I wasn't hearing what was driving this uh, in the prior discussion, it, uh, discussion. As I said, I'm just coming new to this. So. I think these are the kinds of questions we need to be asking and, and, and need to have addressed. Thank you, Chief. Hey, hey. Commissioner McKernan, I just want to say I'm not, I absolutely have some ideas for strategically addressing future public safety needs across the board um, in our e entire county when that discussion you know, comes up. I guess I'll go back to what I said originally. I have a sense of urgency with this project. Um, I personally have worked very hard to recruit development to my district um, and that's you know I would like to see that investment protected it's just and it's what else is um, bringing it forward is the demand and the need for a more suitable facility for public safety also and and I think that that's un unarguable that there is a tremendous need but every developer with the new economic development, wants that investment protected, wants those citizens protected. So, you know, if, if that's one of our arguments uh, or rationale now, what does it set us up for? Well, I think it sets, um, I, like I said, this is more of a Wyandotte County wide strategy that you're talking about. And I do think it's something that, you know, we need to consider. And I don't want to get too far off what the subject is, but we've had multiple conversations about new public safety facilities. Um, in the legends area and how that might have been done differently when that was done and the need for an immediate facility right on site there to protect that level of investment. Um, so I'm just saying, uh, I was just reiterating that's been talked about before. We learned from our mistake and let's hopefully we'll remedy that, that when we have large investments in areas that we back them up. Totally agreed, but we have a very, very tight budget so we have to be very thoughtful. Sure. about how we go about backing all those up. Well, the, mm -hmm. the item tonight actually didn't ask us for any action. Mm -hmm. It just says discussion and direction regarding potential financing options. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure our next meeting is the 29th of this month, I believe, um, and then no meeting in October because that's the October meeting moved up, then strategic planning November 1st. Mm -hmm. So you would prefer not to hold it for strategic planning? I think we need to have the discussion at strategic planning, but what I'd like to see put out is, what do you call it again, Doug, a NOFA? Notice of need. A notice of need. Um, I'd like to see that notice of need go out, and I'd like to see real numbers collected on um, the cost of the facility. Can that be accomplished before strategic It, we could certainly attempt to get that done before strategic planning. Sure. The notice of need could be sent out and we, and we could have the selection of the design bill contractor 
I, I don't believe we could get to final numbers by November 1st. Well, if you could start the process, I think I'd feel good about that. I, I, okay. What, what will that give us, this notice of need? Because here's the thing. It sounds as though, based on what the chief said, what I'm hearing here, mm -hmm. there is a need to do this. But the question remains, what are we not going to do to cover this 104,000 on average in the budget for the next year, next seven years? What are we not going to do? And I think that's why it's important we do look at this at the strategic planning. You know, I, I, I'm not, I'm more comfortable than when this discussion began about the why and the need and what the current situation is. But the real question then becomes, what's not going to be done? And we'll, we'll save this for strategic planning, but we could look at that as the flip side. Rather than saying, what are we not going to fund? We could say, what's our target for increasing our overall revenue so that we can cover this and still fund everything that's on the current list? And I would suggest that's probably the better discussion to have because we certainly need to fund everything that's on that list plus oh, 12 or 100 more items. So again, it's how we frame that discussion, but I, I think we would want to look at how can we grow our tax base and our revenues so that we can afford not only this but other. I like that approach too. Okay, yes. Brian, sir. Um, a few months ago, we we had a, an opportunity, and uh, it affected the CMIP budget on Minnesota Avenue, and I think we made an adjustment to the CMIP of a, like a million three, um, without a whole lot of heartburn, and I'm a little uh, surprised that we don't have that option before us today. I think the staff brought forward modifications to the CMIP budget over time and how we would find that $1.3 million so that we could advance some project, which was another opportunity. This is $100,000. So if we're going to revisit this at some point in the future, I would like to ask uh, staff to make recommendations along the lines that Commissioner Townsend was mentioned, just how are we going to pay for it? Where it's going to, where's the money going to come from? And if we can find 1.3 million to spend in one year, surely we can find $100,000 to spend in one year. I'm glad you said that, Commissioner, because I can remember it was maybe after the strategic planning or one of the early budget that we actually went down and identified this is not happening or this is being delayed, uh, so we can accommodate that. So that is the way I think we we need to approach it. I just clarify that point because okay. you're <clears throat> you're right this is the annual output that you're looking for what we did was we came back and said here's a million dollar project so you had a debt service of that so it would have been like fifty thousand dollars on an annual basis that we were changing your comparable would be by saying that million dollars is compared to the 2.25 million dollars okay. because we were looking at a whole project and inserting another whole project in place of it so it's just what the annual debt is but yeah that's certainly an option for us to work on and not obviously that's what I figured we would be doing if we had the direction that this was a project we wanted to pursue Commissioner McCarran yes I guess if from what I've heard and again I felt like I'd come in the middle or maybe at the tail end of a discussion a longer term discussion but it would seem to me and I appreciate your comments but the, the Minnesota Avenue project of up fronting some of those costs because we have a developer coming in and sensitive to uh, what the, the chief assures us that it's not a re direction or resource it's just simply the presence there and your comments um, that there is uh, we're, we're accessing dollars that we would not be able to access it would seem to me that a little more quick movement on this would be appropriate um, but I also am sensitive to what you have consistently said that for the unified government commissioners as you try to really have a strategic plan for addressing the very real needs in the community and systematically approaching those and having a good plan but given that it would seem to me that we you could move a little bit move forward a little bit more quickly and I want to be clear I think it's a cry and shame if we leave two dollars on the table for every dollar we can spend then shame on us 
Um, and so I, I have no problem bringing an RFA back at our next meeting to say make it happen and then take that to the full commission. I want to be clear about that. I just thought that if we'd only delayed it by a month and allowed all the commissioners to be engaged in that discussion, there might be some benefit to that. But if there is an urgency, a time urgency to this, I have no problem uh, bringing an RFA back uh, at our next meeting and then moving forward on that. I would, I'd like to do that. Um, and that doesn't, I am totally, like I said, supportive of having an overall um, discussion about a strategy in addressing public safety needs. And I really have put a lot of time and thought into that and how that can be helpful throughout the county. My concern is I just don't want it this one project and this one opportunity to get lost in that conversation and delayed even further. That's my well, only Well, there's an concern. urgency to this one, though, because there's real money right. that'll disappear That's right. if we don't make this commitment. So I just have one last question. Doug, could you please, for, um, on the record for the whole committee, what is the actual financial gap that we're trying to cover? So if on an annual gonna basis. write us a check, I'm just curious, if someone's going to write us a check right now for whatever that gap was, now don't add the, the debt, <laughs> the debt financing. I say if someone's going to write us a check to cover the gap, what okay. would that be for? Or, well, basically $100,000 for seven years. I so mean, it's $102,000 to $104,000. You know, I'm sure we could come up with the thousands. So if we could come up with $100,000 for seven years, assuming the TIF revenue comes in as we're currently projecting it, we would be covering our debt. So from 16 through 2022. So could somebody potentially, if somebody was to give us $300,000, um, would that delay three more years? Could theoretically that delay three more years of finding money? Lou, how would you structure that? Would you be able to just make that part of the bond payment and do it in that fashion? Or would you pay it up front? I mean, you could. I think what, what I would offer is, um, as proposed, or if we had $300,000 additional, the, the CMIP is an evolving document. Um, as proposed, there's no impact to the budget in 2015. When we prepare the 2015 amended budget for 2016, we'll, we'll look at the res resources we have at time. There'll be other com competing interest. However, if we commit to this project, we've made a commitment to go forward and we may say as a result of that commitment, we need to reduce another project or we may have sufficient resources that, that we do not. But it's, I, I, it's not a static um, document. However, based on our current budget policy, this would be a change to our CMIP and I I would be in agreement that we would need some concurrence, whether it's through an RFA, to, to ad adjust our CMIP to accommodate this project. I'm not, I'm not certain that that's the answer you're looking for, but we, w we certainly can restructure the debt. This debt structure is a, a preliminary number. Uh, we're, we're assuming interest rates that were really current in the last couple months. They may change. Uh, by the time March comes around, or January, we're going to issue our debt in January. And I think if we were given where we are this time of the year, we're in September, the time this project would be approved, I think we would add it to our CMIP and, and uh, debt finance it after the first of the year. So then what I'm hearing here then is our direction is to create a, a request uh, for action that would be to effectively move forward with the financing as outlined on this projection sheet and to bring that back for our next meeting, which would be the September 29 meeting. And we're issuing the notice of need also. Yeah, I think we can move forward on that. And, and I think one thing we're looking at is probably a construction cycle that has a large amount of this work done in 2015 anyway. So, I mean, it's, it's getting out there, getting bids and design stuff to move forward on it. So the groundwork and what we'll be doing to, 
to frame this thing up it's all going to happen next year we're not going to start doing that in january february anyway this year so okay. we're looking at a spring summer construction cycle for this project so i'm not you know i think what we're doing now is okay from a time perspective mike correct me if you think i'm wrong no you're you're right on and i and i guess i'll know and if you're following where lou went with this the difference in the as the RFA, so we're bringing this forward is how this project looks. When we moved our budget, we were right before budget and we were talking about an action that was happening in our 2014 item. So as that was where we were on that Minnesota Avenue Inc. project. That's why we needed to identify. Well, we're talking about something in 2016. Things push around back and forth, project cost estimates move. So. Um, I don't know that we would necessarily be identifying what project this changes out at this time. We we have to figure it out. But so we would just be the RFA would be to just approve the structure of that financing as it currently exists, knowing that the final numbers may have changed. So and, and right now we're moving with the South Patrol piece of it, and then we'll evaluate the tactical unit in the future. Yes. Or are you looking for both these pieces to come forward on that RFA? Personally, I think that the Public Safety Committee needs to take action on the tactical unit. I don't think I understand a real recommendation from them. The recommendation was to move the tactical and and the um, <coughs> South Patrol facility forward. That was the recommendation. I was at that standing committee. Um, what, what I think Doug is trying to say and the chief are trying to say is that despite the commission's recommendation, which by the way, the vote was unanimous in case anyone was wondering, um, despite the commissioner's unanimous recommendation to move tactical and South Patrol forward, and for us to figure out here at Economic Development how to pay for that, um, their recommendation is that that, from police and administration, that location may not be the best location. Is that correct, what I'm hearing you say? Here. Yes, that is, right. that is correct. And I, and I think one thing to that, too, is you could say, as it's put before you as a task, South Patrol has a leverage dollar factor coming from state commerce and the TIF. Tactical unit, you could say, well, let's just put that in and build that in as a future budget and bring that back during next year's budget process in our CMIP plan. We can move one without the other moving out the same day. Chief, unless I'm wrong. I mean, tactical can operate there, I believe, if South Patrol moves out, you know, into 2016 and it moves out a year later or something like that. So it's more of a, I think you're right, in a public safety facility to evaluate with the other projects because there is no leverage dollar, I think as Commissioner McKernan was pointing out, that makes it happen. It's more looked at as a priority based on where we are with other projects. So that I think that's probably the really we're supposed to be taking all our projects forward to the uh, committees. And I believe that is this committee actually though, that we'd be coming back because we were, it's probably a combination of the two committees. We were gonna be bringing back our projects and start, yeah, I think you would ask for that Commissioner Walters. The one is identify what projects we're doing now. Actually, that's the Public Works Committee. We'll be taking it to them to say, here's the projects we're moving on now then our future year projects that are out there 16 17 18 which ones do we want to look around for a priority and we could put it in the mix really to compete with the dollars we're identifying with that group and that'd probably be the since it's not leveraging any money now that'd probably be the fair way to do that Well, if our challenge is to figure out how to pay for this, have we figured out how to pay for this yet? That, or is yes. that what we're going to do next month? Well, I, <laughs> I, I would say the answer to that is the solution that's been brought forth here that leverages the commerce money with the um, uh, TIF money noting what our level of risk is of some money that we'll be bringing out of our dollars that it's going to go that we're saying we're going to pay for it and then figure out how to finance it within our debt financing beginning in 2016. So now we have it yet. 
Yeah, we haven't had dinner. Through the process of strategic planning and then budget process next year. And just so I'm clear too, so I'm, I'm a little bit confused. So I just want to be clear about this. So, um, so regardless of the process between now and January, we're not as a government issuing any more debt or any more bonds to cover costs until January, right, Lou? That's one between now and January. If this uh, project were to move forward, I, that would be the timeline I would recommend. Yeah, but, but skip this project. We're not going to go out and issue any more debt between now and January, are we? We, um, we are currently working on a refunding of uh, star bonds, 1999 Speedway star bonds. And our expectation is we'll do that issuance prior to the end of the year, but not, we don't have any general obligation debt scheduled uh, through the remainder of the year. That's not new. That's just a refinancing because it makes sense financially. Okay. So I think what you're saying is that we can get all of this done by the next time we go. Our spring cycle for bonds. Yes, which is in January. Yeah. And then construction can begin shortly thereafter because we'll have issued the debt for the project, correct? Yes, I believe that's Now, right. obviously, like you said, not in January. Yeah. No, yeah, I think <laughs> that's how shortly we'll as soon as up to work. construction season opens. And I think we're, we're this project has does have the benefit of having this state money into it and I'll have to converse with them about how they would let that go, but that may allow us to move forward with some engineering money in advance of when we'd actually have the bond revenue money in advance. I say that engineering architecture money in advance of when we'd actually have the bond money in hand, which probably wouldn't be until March. Okay. So what we've asked then is for an RFA that would contemplate the construction of South Patrol Station not the tactical unit, but South Patrol, using the financing proposal as laid out here or however it may be amended between now and ne our next meeting. And then that we would take action to approve that construction and that financing plan, knowing that the ultimate details of that are yet to be worked out in the whole process of assembling the budget. So can I ask one more question? You may. Um, and it's related to this uh, common area maintenance, $20,000 a year for 20 years. Am I reading that correctly? So that's $400,000. And we're borrowing that money also? No, we, we would not be. That would be an additional annual operation. Okay, so we're not borrowing that. It's not that, part that of would be added to with the numbers you see on the top half of that, the sheet does not include those. Okay, so that we're just gonna pay that as we go out of general. Yeah, and, and I assume over time, if it's $20,000 to begin with in year one, it may be less in year one, sure. but it, okay. it certainly would increase over time. Thank you. Okay, so that sounds like we have a consensus then on the direction that we're asking staff to take and to bring back an RFA for our next meeting. Brian, All right. I'll just say there's a lot of people here that came in support of the public safety. So I'd just ask them, unless somebody has something to say, to just stand if you're here and you're in support of the public safety facility. If you could just stand up, that'd be great. You don't, doesn't mean you have to come forward. <laughs> don't be afraid. I do want to speak. Ma'am, okay. you do wish to speak? Yes. All right, if you could uh, step to the podium, please just give us your name and your address for the record, and then okay. we'll listen to your statement. Teresa Gardner, 5745 Miami, in Kansas City, Kansas. First, first off, whether or not Walmart is there, I think that would have been a good place for the South Patrol Station, simply because a lot of the crime in that area is right across the street. It's what the police call a hot spot. And it, that would be a good location just to help cut down the crime in that particular housing development. The other thing is, if you do allow uh, retail development to go under, 
what does that cost? What, what did Indian Springs cost the UG when it failed? And then the need, South Patrol needs a new home, a better home, an adequate home. And uh, to me, it's a no brainer. This is the way to go and give them what they need to protect the community. Uh, and that's what I have to say. Thank you, ma'am, appreciate it. So, oh. yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, I just wanted to state I do agree with Commissioner Merguia on the uh, presence of having a store there and by interstate highways. Uh, I will tell you that in 1967, bank robberies tripled because of the interstate highway. And I know that because I worked in a bank for 25 years in security, and we used to have once a month drillings by the FBI. This is not a bank, but it's a lot easier to rob than a bank is. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Once again, if we, we, and I know you will, if you could just give us your name and address for the record. Bill Rogers, 7362 Yecker. Thank you. I'd just like to make a couple comments if I could. One, I'd like to, when we talk about uh, leveraging dollars, and, and I, I do agree with that wholeheartedly, the one thing that I didn't hear tonight was the fact that a nonprofit in the area has donated land, which is also should be considered of the cost of this facility. Um, and that's a direct result of the hard work going on in that area by by certain nonprofits. I would also like to say when we refer to this area as a strip mall, I don't know if you guys have been down there. I typically wouldn't refer to this as a strip mall. Also, um, I've been involved from the very start of this plan. And the when we talk about the uh, TAC unit, it would be placed behind the South Patrol, if I believe, kind of. And, and that's a great location for it. Uh, you have the rail yards, the big hill um, on that side is kind of hidden back there. I understand that when they leave, they would be seen no more than what I would call South Patrol. I don't uh, disrespect your opinion by no means. Um, the other thing, uh, I've spent a lot of time on this project, hours on this project out in the community, uh, in the Argentine area, Metropolitan Ruby, um, all in that area, Silver City, knocking on doors, um, talking to people on their porch, sitting in their living rooms. And, and when we talk about the Argentine community, it's a little bit different. When you knock on their doors, a lot of people invite you in. It's not we're going to talk on the porch. It's come on in and we talk. And I've spent a lot of time in individual houses. And when we had the, uh, initially we had the uh, parole office involved, uh, the people were for it. They were for it. They want this. And, and I was recently out again and uh, have been revisiting with people. And now the uh, parole is gone. They're really for it. So when we've had several meetings and, and packed house, I think what's interesting is is it's not often that you get a community to agree on one thing, the entire community. This entire community has agreed that they want this police station. They support the police in that community. They want them there and they need this new facility. I, for one, know that uh, the police come up a little short. They have their command um, um, unit uh, housed at 50th and State. Uh, which not was was not designed for that. So now you have one of the the bays which needs to be used for uh, for the uh, the work up there being used to to park a uh, the command unit. So so they're coming up a little short, and I think it's time that you give them that. And I want to I want to thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. All right, that brings us to the end of item number one on our agenda tonight. We'll now cycle into what was originally item number one, so everything now has been pushed down by one. And so that is Mr. Levin with a quarterly report for June. Commissioners, uh, you, you may remember, uh, I believe it was two standing committee meetings ago at the request of the chair of this committee, we brought forth a an example report of uh, budget to actuals and and what we had discussed was presenting that report on a quarterly basis and so we've 
what, what you have in your agenda packet is a report through the second quarter of 2014. However, we have actually modified it with the amended budget that was adopted uh, in July of this year. So it, it's simply, there's no action required. It's just information to share with uh, the commissioners. I can uh, review in any further detail uh, what's contained in the report. We, the first page looks at the summary for each fund of, of the, that are budgeted and where they stand in terms of total budget and actuals through mid-year. And then uh, the detail that's provided after that uh, looks in detail for the general funds in each of the, uh, the three funds, the city, county, and the parks, consolidated parks funds that comprise the general fund. Certainly would be open to any discussion or any questions that commissioners have. I love these reports. I really appreciate you putting these together. They're excellent to give us um, an idea of how we're doing. And one of the things that I really love when I look at the consolidated report, if I can get everything to go landscape here, is that at the 50% mark of, and I know it's dangerous to do this, however, at the 50% mark of the year, we've only spent 44% of what we budgeted uh, that we would spend. So on a you know, percentage basis, it would appear that both revenue and expenditures were pretty much hitting the mark that we expected. And I know that we have peaks and valleys in terms of both revenue and expenditures, but it, nothing looks like it's just enormous. Would you agree that there's no one line or fund that really is way out of whack with what we kind of expected or projected. Yeah, I, I think um, if, if we turn to the consolidated general fund, and, and I look at s similar numbers that, that you do, um, I'll, I'll start on the first page. It says co consolidated general revenues and tax revenues. that uh, shows we've received 63% of the revenues uh, year to date. Property tax actually just under 96%. And, and that's because the major two tax distributions occur in January and June. So we've received the majority of property tax revenue. But by the end of the year, our expectation is it will receive uh, the total property tax revenue that we budgeted. Um, on, on some of the revenues, there, there actually is a, a slightly a one-month lag. So we might have only received five out of the 12 months of revenues that we're, that we're going to receive or we receive it after the uh, first week of the following month, but, but the, the final distributions cre credited will be credited to December. Um, if we turn the page where, where one key component is personnel expenditures, and, and you see for the, uh, again, the consolidated general fund, we have a total budget of 144.7 million and we're just under 50% today, and so, or as of June 30th, and, th and that's a key number. There's uh, certain expenses that will uh, hit the fourth quarter, but that's the number we're gonna watch most closely, and, um, and, and hopefully uh, we'll, we'll uh, fall below budget. On, on uh, contractual expenses, we're above 50%, but that's because certain of those expenditure areas that they've been encumbered early in the year and and so there there won't be any additional uh, encumbrances any other comments or questions for mr levin what i would say is thank you to you and to your staff who prepared this i think it's great and i think it's a great addition to what we get not only in this committee but then what the full commission gets as well thank you If there is, oh, there it is. So if there is nothing else. Yeah, what would you do? Sorry, I've got to get back to the beginning here. All right, which brings up our next item then. 
which is a resolution renewing UMB Bank as a depository for the unified government. Mr. Levin. I'm actually, I'm going to turn this over to uh, Jody Boating just to give more of an explanation on the, the legal authority of why this is being brought before you. UMB is currently uh, designated as an official depository for unified government funds, both our operating accounts and any idle funds they choose to bid on. Um, but they have asked us to renew the corporate resolution and uh, name the authorized officers and employees that are authorized to sign on the account, change in personnel, and so that is the reason for this new resolution. It's just updates and a, a current one. Comments or questions for Ms. Boating or Mr. Levin? The request for action that is before us is that we adopt the resolution renewing the designation of UMB Bank as an official UG depository. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll uh, call, please. Oh, oh yes, ma'am. Sorry, hold that roll call. There is no time limit on this. It seems as though I read somewhere where this is required um, because of a recent change by SEC. Is that correct? No, I think that's really on the next item. Oh, on the next item. Okay. This so, it does, uh, it continues to have effect until written notice of the termination. Okay, thank you. Roll call, please. Roll call, Alvin. Walter. Aye. 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 That then does bring us to our next item, which is revised uh, cash management and investment policy. What staff is passing out is that you receive the document for item number three, but there was one additional change, and that's what uh, came about this morning as we we're working through it. So Jody has highlighted that on your red line. Yeah. Um, just just to give you a brief overview, uh, com commissioners, the unified government has received expanded investment powers from the state, and it allows us when we um, invest our idle funds, we can go out to up to four years and, and gives us the opportunity even in this low interest rate environment to, to earn, um, I'll say, greater interest revenue. As part of that, we, we, we have had in place for a number of years our cash management and investment policy. The state requires an annual review um, pr before the governing body and we this is something we've done each year and we looked to see do we need to modify anything in our investment policy how can we improve our investment policy and uh, we, we, we do have a, uh, a staff committee that meets on a quarterly basis and at our last meeting we, we uh, looked specifically at the area of an investment advisor. And as uh, Commissioner Townsend alluded to, there, there's been action by the Securities and Exchange Commission that uh, associated with the uh, Dodd-Frank um, legis federal legislation that, that specifically defines what a, a uh, local government independent investment advisor is and what the re their requirements are. And so what we've attempted to do is simply add language that defines what an investment advisor is and we've incorporated in, it, it into our cash management and investment policy. And the red line you ha have before you 
um, really details that addition to our investment or to our cash management and investment policy. So, so the action I'm, we're looking for is for the commission to approve this change, to take it before the full commission, and then uh, once that's done, we would submit it to the state of Kansas to, for, to continue our um, expanded investment power authority. Any questions or discussion of this item for Mr. Levin? Move for approval. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve uh, the revised cash management policy. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Roll call, Alvin. Walter. Aye. Maria. Aye. Townsend. Aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you, Mr. You. Levin. Uh, item, the original item number four is the proposal of an ordinance that would add digital outdoor advertising services to the occupation tax list. And I believe Mr. Walters from Legal is here. Waters, Waters sorry. I put an L in there. Walters is sitting next to me. Don't Waters is over there. That's right. Good evening, commissioners. Good evening. Um, yes, this is a proposed amendment um, that actually complements uh, another ordinance that's being considered by the Planning Commission as we speak. Uh, that would change the sign code to formally allow for digital billboards. What this does is amend the occupation tax code to tax those boards, assuming that it passes through plan. And um, we have two, uh, two different ones. One, the first ordinance um, simply adds the definition of digital outdoor advertising services. And then on the, the second ordinance, we actually implement the tax. And this is all related to the initiative that Commissioner Walker has been working on to try to clarify and update some of the sign ordinances Correct. in general. Correct. Okay. Yes. Any questions or discussion for Mr. Waters regarding this? Yes, ma'am. Well, I was wondering, in light of the fact that uh, Commissioner Walker, I think, had withdrawn uh, for a rework of that, what is the impact on moving this ahead without that part of the uh, amended uh, law being in place already? Uh, yes, Commissioner Townsend. I've actually, I've spoken with Commissioner Walker mm -hmm. and uh, we've found language that he is comfortable with mm -hmm. um, and those proposed revisions are what is going before the Planning Commission tonight. So he's comfortable with that new language mm -hmm. and um, and so that's going on a separate track. If, if this were to pass tonight, they would both um, converge at the September 25th uh, full commission meeting. And so you would have um, all the ordinances. You would have the sign code amendment um, to, to look at and the occupation tax amendment. So they would, they're on separate tracks right now, but they, they would come together on the 25th. I have questions. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm not really clear about this. Um, so are you saying that moving forward, or have we in the past charged $10,000 for outdoor advertising signs less than 300 square feet and 20,000 for those over? Have we done that? Has that been our policy in the past? Um, I think the, uh, the blue sheeted version should be uh, different. Um, I hope you have the blue sheeted numbers are um, 2,500 and 10,000. Do you have, I hope. Sorry if you didn't. Have we always charged the 2,500 and the 10,000? Uh, no, this, this is new because we've never had digital billboards before. Um, currently for static billboards, um, it is $351 for the small, 1,400 for the larger ones. Uh, what we've done is under the uh, new proposed ordinance, the digital boards would be allowed to display seven different boards per minute and so what we've done to come up with these, these figures are basically multiply the tax amount that the static boards had by seven um, to, to reflect the increased amount of um, you know advertising and faces that it would be able to show and so that's how 
Um, that's how the numbers for the digital boards. So all the digital boards that we currently have up that weren't allowed, <laughs> oh. the people that got variances for those and that have moved forward that are already out there, did they pay $2,500 or $10,000 for those boards? I'm um, actually, Commissioner, my understanding is I don't believe that KCK actually has any digital. Um, the ones out by the, the casino or in Edwardsville? Um, is that? She's referring to digital signs versus oh, digital billboards. I'm I sorry. think that's where the confusion is. I'm so sorry, yes. We don't have any digital billboards in our community today. We do have digital stores that are there in front of There's a digital billboard out by um, it's Edwardsville in, on 435. It's right. in Edwardsville. It's in Edwardsville. Edwardsville. Oh, it's in Edwardsville. Yes, it's in their jurisdiction. That's why. Okay, so you're not talking about the digital signage, the no. ones that businesses no. have now. These are the large, the large highway. These would be along the highway, the, the large boards. Okay, and so all this is addressing is that cost on those issues that would allow those. Correct. Okay. Any other discussion or questions or comments? We really, we have two separate but related uh, items here. And the first is adding digital outdoor advertising services to the occupation tax list. And the second is then setting the occupation tax amount mm -hmm. as submitted on the blue sheet. Move for approval of both items. Jody, can we approve both with the same vote? If you are trying to vote the same way. <laughs> <laughs> second. So there's a motion and a second to approve both the ordinance adding digital outdoor advertising services to the occupation tax list and the ordinance setting the occupation tax amount for those advertising services as presented in the blue sheet submitted by legal. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Roll call. Aye. 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 Mr. Waters, thank you. thank you. That brings us to the end of our agenda items this evening. With no other business before us, we are adjourned.